Hi. Now, if you've been watching my earlier tutorials on using DeMar's theorem to express multiple angles for cosine and sine in terms of cosine theta or sine theta, then you might like to try this as an example. So I'll give you a few moments just to pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Now, do you remember then, I showed you that if you had z equal to cos theta plus i sine theta, then by de Maas theorem, z to the power n was equal to the cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. And using this, we can rewrite then the cosine of five theta plus i sine five theta as being identical to the cosine of theta plus i sine theta, all raised to the power five. Now, what we do is we expand this and we compare real parts and then imaginary parts. And we should be able to work our way towards expressing cos five theta and sine five theta in terms of cos theta and sine theta. Now when it comes to expanding this, this is quite lengthy. So what I'm going to do is just move this to the side here. I'm going to rewrite this as being identical to C plus IS to the power five. C for cos theta and S for sine theta. And if I do expand this, then what we've got is that this is identical to, and there's many ways of expanding this. I'm going to use the binomial expansion using Pascal's triangle. So I need the coefficients. So I'm going to write this out first of all, starting with one, we've got one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one, and then for five, it's going to be one, five, ten, ten, five, one. So I'm assuming you're familiar with Pascal's triangle, or you could use the combinations method, okay, of expanding this. So uh, anyway, we end up with one lot of c to the power five, so you've got c to the power five there, and then for the next coefficient, it's going to be plus five. Drop the power by c, okay, or by one, and so that's c to the power four, and introduce is to the power one. Next term is going to have a coefficient of 10, so it's going to be plus 10. Drop the power on c by one, so it's c to the power three, and increase the power on is by one, so it's now going to be up to two. And we work our way down through these remaining terms, so we've got 10, now we have c to the power two, is to the power three. Next term would be five, and then c to the power one, I'll just leave it as c, and then is to the power four, and then final term would be one lot of c to the power zero, well, that's just going to be one, and then i s to the power five. Okay, so there's your terms for the binomial expansion of that. Now what I'm going to do next is group together all the real parts and the imaginary parts. Okay, so if we look at the real parts, and again, I'm going to have to move over to here because this is going to be quite long. So it's identical to, well, c to the five is real. And this term here is going to be i to the power one. That's going to be imaginary. This one here, we're going to have i squared. That's real because i squared is negative one. So we've got minus 10 c cubed and then s squared. Okay, this term here is going to be imaginary with i cubed in it. This term will be real because it's going to be i to the four. i to the four is 
plus 1, so we've got plus 5c s to the 4, plus 5c s to the power 4. Then we've got the remaining terms are going to be imaginary. So I'm going to put i as a common factor out the front. And then what we've got is this term here, which is imaginary. It's going to be 5c to the power 4 s. So I put that in, 5c to the power 4 s. This term we said was real. This term is imaginary. We've got i cubed. i cubed is going to be minus i. So we've got minus 10 c squared and then s cubed. And then we have this last term here, i to the power 5. Well, i to the power 4 would be plus 1, times it with another i, and you've just got i. So i to the power 5 is just i. So you've got i s to the 5, so plus s to the power 5. OK? Now, what we've got to do is express cos to the 5 theta, the real part, totally in terms of cos theta. So we've got a few signs here, OK, which we need to change. And we can do this knowing the identity that sine squared theta is the same as 1 minus cos squared theta. So we've got for the first term here, c to the power 5, and then minus 10 c cubed. But in place of s squared, write that as 1 minus c squared. For this next term, plus 5c, we've got s to the power 4. We can think of this as s squared, all squared. So s squared was 1 minus c squared, and we just need to square that. OK, so that's the real part done. Now we move on to the imaginary part, plus i multiplied by. Now. For the imaginary part, sine 5 theta, we've got to express it in terms of sine theta. So we don't need these cosines here, OK? So we can pick up on the fact that c squared, cos squared theta, is 1 minus sine squared theta. And for c to the power 4, that's 1 minus cos squared theta, all squared. So for this term here, we've got 5s multiplied by 1 minus s squared, all squared, OK? And now for this next term, we've got minus 10 s cubed multiplied by c squared. c squared is 1 minus s squared. And then we've got plus s to the 5, OK? Now all we've got to do now is just expand all the brackets and then group up the terms. And to save time, you can check it. I've got it here. And if I now group up the real parts and the imaginary parts, I end up with the following. Now, that means that all I've got to do now is just compare the real parts and the imaginary parts. Now, if I compare the real parts, let's just put this down, compare the real, then what I have is that cosine of 5 theta must be identical to the real part here. So if I write this in full, we've got 16 cosine of theta to the power 5, and then minus 20 cos cubed theta plus 5 cos theta. And when we look at the imaginary parts, if we compare the imaginary parts, I've got that sine 5 theta turns out to be, well, basically identical to this one. Only instead of having cosine, we've got sine. So it's 16 sine to the power 5 of theta minus 20 sine cubed theta plus 5 sine theta. This doesn't normally happen, OK? It just has happened in this example where you've got exactly the same kind of pattern structure 
for both the cosine and the sine. So don't fall into that trap just from this example of thinking that if you get the cosine expansion, the sine one is going to be exactly the same with sines in instead of the cosines. OK, so uh, this is just uh, a bit of a coincidence that it's fallen out this way. OK, but I hope you've been able to follow that. And if you did do it and got it right, well done. And uh, well, that brings us to the end now of this uh, type of example.